What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll be comparing two of the most popular ways of making API calls in JavaScript, and that is Fetch and Axios. And by end of this video, you will know the key differences between the two, and based on that, you will be able to make the decision of which one you should be using in your next project. So without further delay, let's get started. Now, before we move forward, let's first understand the difference between the two. Fetch is an inbuilt JavaScript function that allows you to make API calls, and it's supported in pretty much all the browsers. Whereas Axios is a third party library that you will have to install in your project in order to use it. Axios comes with a lot of functionality out of the box, which is why it's quite famous in the developer community. Now, in order to compare both of these methods, these are the factors that I will be going through in to evaluate which one is better. So without further delay, let's get into it. Now I've created a Next.js project to find out the key differences between Fetch and Axios. On the left hand side, we are making an API call using Fetch. On the right hand side, we are making API call using Axios. And if you see the URL of the endpoint, they are the same. So we are making API calls to the same endpoint. Now what we'll do next is we'll go through each one of those factors that I mentioned earlier and we'll evaluate which method is better for making API call. So without any more delay, let's get into it. Now the first factor to look at is syntax. If you see on the left hand side in fetch, we are simply passing the URL of the endpoint to the fetch function. And on the right hand side, in order to make a get request, there is a method on Axios called get and to which we can pass the URL. So as far as syntax is concerned, both of these methods are very similar. So you can pick either one is syntax is the main concern for you. Now I am making a get call here, but if you do have to make a post call, syntax for post call is very similar as well in both of these methods. So when comparing the two, syntax is not that big of a factor. Now. Now let's move on to factor number two, which is request or response transformation. If you see on the left hand side, when the fetch call is successful and we do get the response back from the API, we are running this method called JSON. What this method basically does is it will take the response, which is in JSON format, and it will convert that back into JavaScript object that we can utilize. So in case of fetch, we have to do that step manually. It's not a big deal, but it's still something to consider. And on Axios side, if you see, once the call is successful and we get the response from the API, we do not have to worry about converting that response into native JavaScript object. Axios does that for us behind the scenes. So that is plus one for Axios. And the same goes for post as well. If you do have to send a post request in fetch, you will have to use json.stringify and convert your JavaScript object into JSON in order to make that call. On Axios, you do not have to worry about that. You just pass a native object and Axios will convert that into JSON automatically. So as far as request or response transformation is concerned, Axios is better then fetch. Now let's move on to factor number three, which is progress tracking. Let's say if you have an app that requires user to upload files or download files, and you do want to show some kind of a loading screen or a progress bar to the user, there is no out of the box functionality that fetch provides in order to achieve that. But whereas on Axios side, when you are making a get call, you can pass a second argument to the get method. And in that argument, you can use methods like on download progress and on upload progress to keep track of downloading or uploading files and showing some kind of a progress bar to the user. So this functionality comes out of the box on Axios and it's not available on the fetch side. So if you want to achieve the same functionality on fetch side, you will either have to use some other library or you will have to implement it on your own. Now let's move on to factor number four, which is error handling. The way fetch handles errors is completely different from Axios. 
In fetch, the promise is only rejected if there is an actual network failure or the request is aborted. What does that mean? So let's say you make an API call and you get a 404, that API endpoint does not exist. Fetch will still result that in success, meaning this catch statement will not work. So in order to catch all those errors, you'll have to manually check the status code and throw an error. I'll demonstrate that in a minute, but on Axios side, the case is completely different. Axios will throw an error for everything that does not fall under the status code of 200s. So let's say if there is a uh, if there is a status code of 404, Axios will throw an error, which you will be able to catch in this catch statement. Now let's take a look at that with an example. Let's go to the browser and see how these functions are running. So I have this Next.js app here, Axios versus fetch. Let's open the network statement and let's go to fetch page first. So we are making an API call here using fetch. And then if I go to Axios page, we are making an API call using Axios. Cool. Now what we'll do is we'll change the endpoint URL so that it results in 404 and see how both of these methods will handle that case. So let's first go to fetch and I'll change this to do to to do's test hit save go to fetch and you see here the error says data dot slice is not a function instead of saying the api resulted in 404 we are getting a different error you can see we are getting 404 so what we'll do next is we'll come here and we'll console log the response refresh let's see what the response is. So we're still getting the response. Fetch is not throwing an error. But if you see here, the OK property is set to false. What that means is we'll have to check for this OK property in order to throw a custom error whenever such scenario happens. So let's do that. So here I'll check if the response is not true, I will throw an error. So let's do that. Refresh. Now if you see error is different. So now what does that mean is every time you run into 400s or 500 errors, you'll have to throw an error manually. Now let's see how Axios handles that. So I'll switch to Axios. Currently everything looks good, but I'll change this to do to test as well. Hit save, refresh, and there you go. Axios will automatically throw an error saying request failed with status code 404. That means Axios will throw an error for any status code other than anything that falls under 200s. So if you get 500 error, even for that Axios will throw an error. That means you do not need to worry about throwing a custom error in case of Axios. So error handling overall is better in Axios as compared to fetch. Now let's talk about fifth factor, which is timeout. If you are not sure what timeouts are, timeouts are basically scenarios in which server is taking too long to respond to a call and you do not want to keep your user waiting for that long. So let's see how we can implement that. I'll go with Axios first in this case because Axios has out of the box way of implementing timeouts. So what I'll do here is to the get method I'll pass second object as argument and add a property called timeout and give it a timeout of two seconds let's say I'll save this now what we also need to do is we need to delay our API call so we'll add a delay to our API call of five seconds so that means Axios should trigger this timeout so let's go to the browser and test this out. I'll refresh. And there you go. Our API call took longer than two seconds, hence Axios is throwing an error. This is quite handy in order to handle scenarios where the servers are taking too long to return the response. Now, in case of fetch, 
there is no such functionality so fetch does not come with timeout functionality out of the box you can implement it using set timeout and abort uh, controller but there is no out of the box functionality for that so in case of timeouts axios is better than fetch and the last factor on the list is ability to cancel a request both of these methods fetch and axios use a bot controller in order to achieve that functionality so let's go ahead and implement that in fetch first so what we'll do is we'll initiate a new controller and then as a second argument to fetch we'll pass a property called signal and then pass controller dot signal to it so what we'll do next is we'll use this controller to abort this request let's see if that works so i'll move back to the browser and let's go to fetch and there you go it's not working as you can see our request is cancelled awesome now let's go ahead and in implement that in axios as well so i'll do the same thing here controller new abort controller and i'll pass second argument signal is controller dot signal and i'll abort the request let's go to axios as you can see error is cancelled that means we have cancelled the request so when it comes to cancelling the api calls both of these methods are quite similar and that is pretty much it we have covered all the factors and i really hope you will be able to make a better decision on which method you want to use in your project based on everything that i have explained Personally in my opinion I really like Axios and I prefer using Axios in pretty much all my projects unless the project is really really small and I do not need to install a third party library in order to make API calls there is a lot more functionality that Axios offers that I have not covered in this video let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a specific video on Axios there is one functionality i have not covered in axios and i use that pretty much in all my project it's called request and response interceptors i highly recommend you to check that out i'll paste some links in the description below where you can read more about fetch and axios both thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one